Hello everyone, welcome to Law Minds. In this video, we are going to discuss about evidence, its nature and its kinds under the Indian Evidence Act 1872. In an era where information is abundant but facts are contested, the importance of evidence cannot be overstated. As we explore the Indian Evidence Act 1872 in this video, we will reflect on how this historical legislation remains profoundly relevant in navigating the complexities of our contemporary legal landscape. Evidence is the soul of justice. These words echo the sentiment that we are delving into today. In the words of Sir James Fitzjames Stephen, who played a crucial role in the drafting of Indian Evidence Act 1872, the rules of evidence are based on a wise policy which has been found by long experience to be the best calculated to assist in the discovery of truth. Let's understand the definition of evidence under Indian Evidence Act 1872. Under the Indian Evidence Act 1872, evidence is defined as any statement, document, material object or anything whatsoever that is presented before a court of law to ascertain or disprove the existence of a fact. Evidence is the cornerstone of any legal proceedings, aiding in the determination of truth and justice. The Evidence Act outlines various types of evidences rules of admissibility and the standards of proof required for different cases. Nature of Evidence The nature of evidence under the Indian Evidence Act 1872 encompasses various aspects that guide the presentation, admissibility and evaluation of evidence in legal proceedings. Here are key elements that define the nature of evidence under this Act. Firstly, Adversarial System The nature of evidence is closely tied to the adversarial system followed in the Indian legal framework. Parties involved in a case present evidence to an impartial adjudicator who decides the matter based on the evidence presented. Next, Burden of Proof The concept of the burden of proof is inherent in the nature of evidence. The party making an assertion is required to prove it. The Act defines the standards of proof such as preponderance of probabilities, clear and convincing evidence, and proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Rules of Admissibility Evidence must tether to the specific rules of admissibility outlined in the Indian Evidence Act. These rules ensure that only relevant and reliable evidence is presented in court. Relevance and Materiality Evidence must be both relevant and material to the case. Relevance refers to the logical connection between the evidence and the fact it aims to prove, while materiality pertains to the importance of the evidence in the context of the case. Another one is the credibility of witnesses. The Act acknowledges the significance of testimonial evidence, emphasizing the credibility and reliability of witnesses. Cross-examination is a crucial aspect of testing the veracity of witness statements. How confident are you that you can distinguish between a strong and weak piece of evidence? Let's enhance our understanding of different kinds of evidence under the Indian Evidence Act 1872 and the evidentiary values of these different evidences. Oral Evidence Section 59 of the Indian Evidence Act 1872 defines oral evidence as all statements which the court permits or requires to be made before it by witnesses in relation to matters of fact under inquiry. Oral evidence primarily consists of statements made by witnesses during court proceedings. The court allows or requires witnesses to make statements regarding facts relevant to the case. Witnesses are expected to testify based on their personal knowledge and perception of the events. In the case of R. M. Malkani v. State of Maharashtra, the Supreme Court highlighted the importance of oral evidence and the credibility of witnesses. It emphasized that oral evidence could be as trustworthy as documentary evidence. The next is Documentary Evidence. Section 61 to 90 of the Indian Evidence Act 1872 deal with the admissibility and proof of documentary evidence. Documentary evidence includes any document that may be admitted as evidence. Documents can include written or printed statements, maps, plans, photographs, 
electronic records or any other material on which information is recorded the act specifies conditions for the admissibility of documents such as the need for proper execution authenticity and compliance with rules regarding admissibility in the case of state of maharashtra versus praful b desai the supreme court emphasized the importance of proving the authenticity of documents it held that the burden lies on the party producing a document to establish its genuineness going further under the indian evidence act 1872 both oral and documentary evidence can be further categorized into direct and indirect evidence here is an explanation of this differentiation direct or primary oral evidence statements made by a witness based on personal knowledge of the facts in question the witness directly perceives or experiences the events testimony is based on the witness's own observations an example include a person who witnessed a car accident and testifies about what they saw indirect or hearsay or secondary oral evidence statements made by a person who did not directly witness the events but heard about them from someone else the witness reports that what others have said generally considered less reliable due to the potential for inaccuracies for example a person testifying about a conversation heard from a third party regarding the car accident next direct or primary documentary evidence the document itself serves as a direct proof of a fact without the need for extraneous evidence the content of the document directly supports a fact in question no need for additional testimony to establish the fact for example a signed contract that directly proves the terms agreed upon indirect or secondary documentary evidence the document is introduced to prove the truth of its contents but its contents are based on statements made by someone who is not a witness in the case the document contains information relayed by someone other than the author it may raise issues of credibility and reliability an example to this is a letter containing statements made by a third party about an incident understanding these distinctions is crucial in evaluating the probative value of evidence presented in court and ensuring a fair and accurate adjudication of cases under the indian evidence act 1872 next we can discuss about significance of digital evidence which was introduced by information technology act 2000 digital evidence when properly handled and presented can be highly significant in modern legal proceedings the legal framework including the information technology act plays a crucial role in determining the admissibility and weight of digital evidence in indian courts the information technology act 2000 is a key legislation in india that addresses issues related to electronic transactions and digital evidence section 65b of this act is particularly relevant to the admissibility of electronic evidence it outlines the conditions under which electronic evidence including digital evidence can be admitted in court it requires certification by person occupying a responsible official position in relation to the operation of the relevant device or the management of the relevant activities in conclusion evidence under the indian evidence act 1872 is a cornerstone of the legal process serving to establish or disprove facts in a fair and just manner its nature encompasses a comprehensive array of statements documents and material objects each playing a unique role in the pursuit of truth within legal proceedings from oral and documentary evidence to direct and indirect evidence indian evidence act 1872 provides a nuanced framework for presentation admissibility and evaluation understanding the distinctive characteristics of each kind of evidence is essential in ensuring the effective administration of justice in the diverse landscape of indian legal system
as legal systems evolve the interpretation and application of evidence continue to shape the foundation of equitable and transparent legal proceedings in india that's all for the video thank you for watching i hope you have gained great understanding on evidence its nature and its kinds under the indian evidence act 1872 please like and share the video to get updated with more legal knowledge and news subscribe to law minds